What is up, everybody? It is Alex from Heavy New York calling from the quarantine zone again. And this time we are here with Shiloh. It's great to have all of you here. Thanks for being here. And Dylan, may I say you're looking spectacular today. Like hey, I've never seen thanks, anybody. I've never seen anybody I really wear their name on their face so well. Like, that's amazing. Really, really tried to put on the airs for you. Yeah, I, I'm telling you, who's your tattoo artist? I've never seen anybody tattoo your name so well on your face like that. I can't like. Yeah, he's pretty, uh, pretty minimal. Uh, does it does a pretty good job yeah. very pop art yep minimalism is always great if i screenshot this i could hang it up in the moma but uh <laughs> it's it's so awesome to have you all here uh the new album is snake behind the sun i love that title by the way it just came out this past october you guys want to talk about like how the making of this album was i know that like snake behind the sun has sort of like a specific meaning behind it so how did this sort of a uh, see the light of day we'll start off with uh we'll start off with the beautiful dylan right there um just the the like the the album in general yeah, yeah like, how the making of it was yeah well i don't know if i'm the best person to ask simply because i kind of came i kind of came in in the middle of it uh so i'm i'm a relatively relatively new addition to the band and uh, a lot of the songwriting had been done or at least like s sketches of the full record had been done um uh right before I signed on, like, uh, officially. I had toured with with uh, these guys previously and, like, knew some of their old songs. Um, uh, but I was sort of a... Uh, I came in to basically help finish things, and uh, uh, I was more of a polish than, than like, a, a foundational writer. Um, so I, I don't know, maybe Zach or Greg would be a better person to, to so, at least start. Yeah, excellent. Zach, you want to take it? Yeah, yeah sure. Um, so back in 2019, the end of 2019, um, I, uh, I started living with Drew, our, uh, our bassist, who is not on this call. Um, but uh, he, uh, he and I did a lot of the initial foundation for the writing of this record, um, kind of in the box, uh, you know, kind of, you know, just late at night on a, on a computer and... Um, you know, really tried to get the full scope of like all the ideas that we had and tried to um, incorporate different elements uh, because Drew is also a relatively new member in the in the uh, history of the band because um, we've been around since 2011. Um, and, uh, you know, our, our sound has definitely evolved over that time. And I think having Drew in the mix as a, a sort of core um, uh, creator in in like our sound moving forward uh, and just kind of trying to maintain the integrity of what the band is, um, at, at, you know, at, at within that um, process, um, it kind of lent itself to pushing pushing out the record that we you know had recently we just recently released. Um, a lot of it again was you know late at night writing in our in our separate rooms, you know, right back you know against the wall from each other basically, and kind of presenting those ideas and then. Uh, once we had a, a foundation for uh, any given song, we would pass that along uh, to Greg, and Greg would uh, have his input. And there were there were moments where we, you know, got in the room and, and cohesively like worked on uh, the piece together. Um, but a lot of it, I would say, probably at least eighty percent of it was um, written through a computer, just you know, bouncing ideas back and forth. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's kind of the, the core of how it was written. Yeah, Greg, can you top that? that? Sorry. Yeah. Um, just to, to uh, <clears throat> build on, on that, um, Drew has had a lot of experience. Not, I'm only saying this because he's not here, but Drew's had a lot of experience previously in bands before Shiloh, um, doing most of the like song design on his own, uh, and so like programming drum parts and that kind of thing. Um, so when I was asked to be a part of the writing and recording process. Um, a lot of the drum parts had been like sketched out already. Uh, and then it was sort of my job to come in and, and rewrite the parts that didn't really make a lot of sense. Um, uh, and like build drum parts that were actually playable and not just like, you know, computer programming. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, Greg, did you want to add to that as well? Uh, I mean, Zach nailed it. Um, yeah. I think a lot of it was, like you said, uh, like recorded, 
pre-recorded, demoed, and then uh, sent out kind of to us to like uh, alter it or go with it. Um, for Zach and I, this was kind of a different process than what we've previously written as. Um, with our old bassist and drummer, we usually were four people in a room and just like, here's an idea. All right, let's run with it until we come to another stopping point where it's just like, we can't write anymore. Um, and then we'll either cap it off there or bring, you know, bring it up next time. Um, whereas with this process, uh, I was personally a little iffy about it at first. Um, but I think that it allowed us to really fine tune every little detail of every little song or every song. Um, whereas if we did it the other way that we're, we're used to, I feel like it, um, we, we wouldn't have the chance to like make sure every note is exactly what we want to play or like experiment with different rhythms for drums, experiment with different, like, uh, additional, like we added some, some synths in there, sub synth and, um, uh, just a couple other like per, or percussive elements. And I don't think we probably would have done that until we were in the studio and, um, yeah, so I don't know. It just allowed us to experiment a lot more than we have in the past, which was cool. Reading reading about this album, what I found unique is, I, I, first of all, I love, again, the title, Snake Behind the Sun. Like, that's just, like, uh, compelling enough for me to explore the album. They say don't judge a book by its title or judge a book by its cover, but with this case, just even the title itself is what draws me in. And I know, like, the meaning of it is, like, you know, that they're – is darkness within or like even though it doesn't seem like there is did you like think of this concept uh before you started writing the album all together and maybe that influenced the music itself or did the idea for snake behind the sun the meaning not come until like there was already a full album written well i think um the just that uh the phrase as uh being attached to um a, a you know a piece of work that we wanted to create um had 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 been in, in talks and discussions for a while um and we had also had a couple other um you know song song and and uh album uh title ideas as well um one of those was actually the, the first track off of the uh the record where the light bends um as being a potential name for the record um and the two kind of have um you know syn synonymous meanings um, and as far as, you know, uh, the concept behind that, um, I would say that it, it definitely presented itself, um, at least in the, uh, like the, the, um, the meaning of, of, of those two, it, it kind of presented itself and, and it fit in very well with what we emotionally were trying to achieve at that time. So I would say that the, the emotion behind the title and the meaning behind the title um, definitely presented itself at an early stage in the writing process. And, um, you know, there's definitely parts within the record um, that we purposely decided to make emotional shifts or tonal shifts based around that to kind of help achieve that. And just in general, with the way that the song titles uh, for each track are arranged um, on the record, uh, it, it kind of speaks to that as well. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would say it wasn't the, it wasn't like we had the idea for the, uh, for the concept before writing any material, but it was definitely at an early stage and it, it definitely helped influence how we wanted to present, you know, our thoughts. Well, you know, I've always said that there's a difference between being an album being conceptual and an album being a concept album. And I feel like that this is sort of like a very relatable concept that could resonate with people both very literally and metaphorically. Was the intention of this album to kind of be open to interpretation or did you like want to engage the listener into the meaning of the title and the meaning of the songs as much as the songs themselves? I would say it's a little bit of both, to be honest. Um, you know, we have our own interpretations of, of this music, but obviously being instrumental, um, you know, there it, there's it's ambiguous. It has room to, to kind of, you know, apply itself uh, to folks' lives, depending on what they're going through and uh, depending on their experiences. Um, but I, I do think, um, again, when we were creating the song titles and at that point, the, the idea was very established and then also uh, towards how we arrange each of the songs um, individually as well as a record in whole. Um, I think it was it, it was definitely meant to 
uh, kind of help emotionally engage that person in, you know, the listener in that way um, yeah. to kind of have have uh, the train of thought with the concept in mind. Yeah. And being instrumental as well, like I feel like that allows uh, the instrumentation to be appreciated in ways. And I I'm talking whether the band sounds like animals as leaders or the band is classical or if the band sounds like God is an astronaut or something like that. I think like all instrumental music allows for appreciation of rhythmic elements and in and, you know, other forms of riffs that we wouldn't hear under, you know, the I don't want to say prison like it's a bad thing, but like, you know, under the confines of having vocals. Does every song start off the same way? Does it always start off with guitar or start off with rhythmic elements? Or has the, the has there been a variety in how a song uh, tends to start? Uh, well, I would say definitely on this record, the way that we start things is a, a, a lot different than at least in how we've done things in the past. Um, you know, a lot of the songs in the past, there's slow builds or, um, you know, a, a lot of amorphous sort of uh, tonal elements going on where this record in general, part of the, the like sonic quality that we wanted to have was to be very, um, very, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it, just very impactful um, and attention grabbing in that way to uh, help, I don't know, just engage the listener from the get go. So um, for example, I mean, we, we you know, um, on, on the, again, the first track on the record, it, it, it starts off with this, like, you know, lead guitar line that just comes out of nowhere. There's no like sonic buildup or anything like that. And, uh, it just kind of, you know, continues at a, at a, at a high pace for most of, most of the track. Um, and then, uh, towards the end of the song, I mean, and towards the end of the record, we have a, a song that starts off with, with, uh, like, a kind of a modified kind of, you know, gargly sort of baseline that like we've never done anything like that before. And, and like Greg was saying, there's elements within this record, um, whether at the beginning or through throughout the, you know, the song that we've never incorporated before um, that I think lend itself to um, kind of opening, opening uh, listeners up to, to something like an expansion on it, on our sound. Yeah. Greg, did you want to add something? I saw that you unmuted the mic. Oh, um, I mean, I was, yeah, I think, again, Zach nailed it. Um, I feel like uh, just about, well, it's interesting because when we wrote this album and there's a couple other songs that didn't make it that um, a lot of those felt like they started out the same way. And I think we reworked them um, a couple times, which kind of goes back to the first statement. Um, or first question, it was nice to be able to have the, you know, we have it on our computers and we can just like, let's try cutting this and putting it in the front so that it doesn't start off uh, the same as this song. Let's try this and this. And I think that was definitely really helpful. But like, yeah, like Zach said, I think we experimented with different sounds and um, we had never had anything where like the drums essentially carry over into the next piece. It's usually like feedback or something with guitar melody or something like that. But there's uh, the first song, you know, the, our second song, um, it's just drums that, that create the beat and that continues. So it's just one long piece, which is, is cool. And I think that was Dylan's idea uh, primarily. So it was, it was nice. So. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, I think something that, like a lot of instrumental bands fall, a trap that a lot of instrumental bands fall into pretty easily is um, kind of getting in your own groove in the way that you write songs and uh, sticking to like a certain formula, which uh, for some bands works really well and for other bands it gets really boring really quickly. And, um, you know, it's also really easy for a lot of bands to take another band's formula um, and, and reuse it which I think is a trap that we really try to avoid in the writing of this record. Um, not only like trying to keep from ripping, <laughs> ripping off other bands sounds, but um, in trying to make sure that each song on the record was its own like standalone piece. Um, at least in the, like the way that I wrote my parts, I really tried to make sure that I wasn't reusing um, or recycling ideas yeah. unless they were like, uh, unless there were like musical motifs that I wanted to use like artistically, um, I really wanted to make sure that, that everything, 
everything had its own purpose, um, which uh, I don't know. I, I think we really tried to try to make sure that um, everything was there for a reason, which not every instrumental band is. Uh, I, I, may, I don't find a lot of other instrumental bands uh, taking that much time to like to really make sure that everything is different and everything has like a, has a reason. And, and, um, and I'm glad to hear you say that because how many times, and I love this band too. So like, don't get me wrong, but like how many times, like if you tell people, Oh yeah, our band is instrumental. So, oh, so are you guys like animals as leaders? Like, right. It, it, or, or Russian circles. Like yeah. it's, it's, you know, either of the two. Yeah. And, and yeah. little, little do they know working with ear split, they have a whole treasure trove of instrumental acts that sound nothing like each other. So, yeah. Yeah. And, and the final question I wanted to ask you is, is because it seems like that from what you were telling me uh, so far is that there almost was kind of like a, a reckoning with this album. Like you really discovered a lot about yourself. You learned new things about your sound as, you know, a lot of bands do when they put out a new album. But exploring, you know, this from a little bit more of a conceptual basis and, uh, you know, it, uh, unlocking more uh, skills and sounds for your instrumentation. Do you see that uh, for Shiloh that this album opened up a lot more doors for the future? Well, I mean, we've, uh, you know, from an early stage uh, of, you know, having this uh, record as, uh, you know, its foundation in, in writing it and then also um, starting the, the process of uh, trying to find a home for it. Um, you know, I think we've, you know, sonically definitely, um, I think it's definitely opened up our, our, our sort of, um, like we basically looked at ourselves in the mirror and been able to look at where we've been and like how we want to progress and, and present ourselves as a band. Um, and we, I think, I think that we, you know, were able to achieve what we had in mind. Um, and I think that, you know, obviously like we've, we've had, um, decent response so far. So I'm, that's encouraging and I'm humbled by it and just having the support of, um, you know, a label like Pelagic, um, and uh you know being a part of that has definitely opened opened up things a little bit so um you know i'm, I'm excited to see where things go um from here um and i'm also really excited to get back and in, into the writing process um we have some things uh that are like to be released in a way we haven't really discussed it a whole lot but we have um has some other material that, that came uh that, that was recorded around the same time uh, or at the same time that this record was recorded so there's kind of a, an expansion to that. Um, and, you know, just in general, just pushing forward um, as, as a project and seeing, you know, how we can continue to, to expand on what we already have and, and uh, just kind of build from there. Awesome. And we definitely look forward to hearing more. I want to thank all three of you so much again. And I love the variety of like the, the camera angles as well incorporated on here, the, the mystery incorporated, you know, my thing is getting darker because it's, getting dark out and uh i just forgot to turn my lights on and dylan i just got I, I gotta say out of all the i've done thousands of zoom interviews before you are one of the best looking ones on there and i noticed that greg hey. is, i know that greg hey, is thank you very still, much yeah <laughs> like I, and you know what i think it goes with the motif you're behind the kit the whole time so you might as well you know wear, wear that over here as well <laughs> I, I think when i upload the video and i put a thumbnail of the band shoot i might block out your face is that cool Right, go for it. Actually, preferable. Go for it. Awesome. Good Good to know. Good to know. But thank you all so much, everybody. We are here with Shiloh. Be sure to check out Snake Behind the Sun. This is Alex from Heavy New York, and we will see you next time. And, Thanks so much, man. And ultimate challenge, Heavy New York Challenge. Try to find Dylan on Facebook after this is done. See if you can find the right one. We'll see you next time, everybody.